Well, hello, internet friends near and far. Welcome to another episode of Podcast 99. This is Case 006. And uh, this is part of our journey through the television projects of Michael Schur and company. And uh, my name is Jason, and I'm joined by my friend Jeremy. Say hello, Jeremy. Hey, Jason. How's it going? It is going so well. It is a beautiful Friday as we're recording this. And I'm positive it's like 32 degrees outside. Yeah. Because it's it's springtime in Seattle, but that it's just a lie. The sun is out and you're like, it's a temperature lie. I'm gonna I'm gonna wear shorts today, and then you immediately regret it. Mm -hmm. So until late until four o'clock when mm -hmm. it's like sixty-eight degrees and you're burning yeah. up. Sixty-eight degrees for like an like a half hour. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. enough to make you sweat. And then the sun's like, sorry guys, my bad. <laughs> I'm going to start working my clouds. way over, over <laughs> there behind those mountains. Yep. So, uh, yeah, it's hard here. Have some, have some, uh, light misting of rain. Yeah, for real. Every day I've looked at my weather app and it has said not rainy, but every time I take my dog out, she's right here for a stroll. Uh, it is raining. <laughs> it's like, what is happening? Uh, there's like rain just showing up over my, over my neighborhood and I am not just, just happy like that, about that, it. That, that, that cartoon cloud that just follows you around. Yeah. Why does it always rain on me? Exactly. Mm -hmm. But you know, that's my life. Jeremy, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. I just realized we talk about the weather a lot, which I, I feel like, isn't that the last, like the last step in small talk when you've run out of things to say, that's where we start just to get it out of the way. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just want people cool. to know that as if we're here and they're not into that, then they're not going to like the rest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so start low. Yeah. It can only hopefully go up. No, I'm good. This is one of the best. This is one of the best episodes of the first season, I think. And uh, it really sets the stage for all of the other Halloween episodes to come. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I think this clocked in at a, at a robust 8.4 on the 8 IMDb, IMDb's and, uh, and yeah, I agree. I, this is, this is a great one. It's for again, for the first season of a show, I feel like sure really had, he knew he really kind of honed it in with his first, you know, parks and rec and, and office and stuff. And he's like, this is where we started. And he had such a powerhouse cast. He was able to pull it off. They weren't really, you know, like we said, except for Rosa, most of the characters are just, I mean, Charles was great in this. Um, Holt was being Holt. Jake always hundred miles an hour. And uh, even the little side bit with Rosa and Terry was pretty funny with her. Yeah, it was great. And in Halloween, I love Halloween. It's probably my favorite. Ho it is my favorite holiday. So. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Huh? For the candy? Yeah. Um, because you're well, not I mean, really a dress up in costume kind of person. But that's the thing. That's what I love about it is because it is a time to watch everybody else dress up in costumes and see. All right. No, I no, just like it's a self. It's a self expression kind of situation. Like, what? How do you identify as a superhero or? A, a pun of some kind, a costume pun. I just love it. It's great. I want Yes. I want his nickel back that one year because my kids made me dress up and I taped a nickel on my back. We were just talking about nickelback. Yeah, I know. I know just as bad as the band. And I didn't feel bad about that. It fit. <laughs> it went. It was just on a regular size nickel. Yeah. With a piece of tape and everybody. And I didn't even want to do it. <laughs> it wasn't like I went around going, Hey, <laughs> check it out. Nope. And my kids did that. What, what's your guess costume? Guess what my dad is. You'll, you'll guess when I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. <laughs> oh, so I have to endure this? Yeah. <laughs> until you leave? <laughs> I should have just been playing Nickelback on a, on a stereo too, but... And just hold a photograph? Yeah. <laughs> you had yeah. long hair at one point. Was that during that era where you could... Yeah, but that was more like... That, that was more like Bush. Like more more Gavin, you know, Gavin style. Gavin Rosdale. Gavin Rosdale. Rosdale. Um, yeah, Rosdale. What, uh, what have you, have you dressed up? I do dress up sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not mm -hmm. really something that I am wanting to do. So I just don't really care that much. So no. Halloween is really just a, uh, candy. Uh, it's basically like I'm in the mob and my kids are the neighborhood shops and all of their candy. It's like, Hey, it's a really <laughs> nice bedroom. You've got here. It'd be a real shame if something happened to it. You better yeah. kick up some of that candy to me and I'll protect your, your, uh, your whole the rest, establishment. The rest of the horde. Yeah. 
And so it's really just a way for me to be the Tony Soprano of my house as far as candy goes. Just extorting candy from your kids. All the time. All the time. As was written in the Constitution. Yeah. Exactly. And my kids, they don't really remember that they have candy. Exactly. So it's, I mean, they, they don't, I don't know what it is. Like I get so many friends with kids and you, maybe you have the same experience where it's like, like they have so many rules around their kids' lives, Mm -hmm. like screen time, food, candy, snacks, all kinds of stuff. Right. And like my wife and I, we've never really had like strict rules around those things, mainly because our kids just don't care. Right. (laughs) They turn the TV off when they're done with it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and like in the oh, middle nice. of a show, they'll just be like, nah, I'm done. And like, really? And so, um, which is annoying for me. Cause like I was watching that. Uh, but yeah, so they, they just walk away from TV. They don't really care about candy. Uh, yeah. But you, you also have one, one of your kids. I won't name, I won't name names uh, at one point in their life said, I don't really like cake. No, that wasn't my kid. That was my nephew. You sure? Cause my nephew Noah doesn't like cake. Oh. So, but no, you're probably was... talking about Judah then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's, oh, yeah. he's a picky kid. Yeah. So, uh, he's better now. He likes cake now. Oh, that's good. And he eats a lot more varieties of food. So the other day I was home on a phone call working from home and my, I heard my front door slam and I was home by myself. Uh, but I thought, you know, I thought I was going to be a dead person. Uh, this is me future corpse on the phone. Slam door and uh, I freaked out. I got up and I saw my son running back to the school. <laughs> he came home with and he's running. He's holding a Ziploc bag with pizza in it. <laughs> it's like he came home to get some pizza. I was like, text me at least. But <laughs> like, let me know. You shouldn't be doing that because it's a closed campus. But just let me know so I don't like diarrhea myself. Making the pizza run, dad. Yeah, it was terrifying. Maybe anyway. he's selling it. Well, it is Costco pizza. So, oh, yeah. I mean, that's the good stuff right there. My daughter says at the middle school, there's kids who show up with like backpacks full of Arizona iced teas and they sell them. They sell them at school. Selling and, some of those tall boys and, and prime. <laughs> oh, gross. Which I've never had one of those. I haven't either. They just look an, so gross. I'm an old. So I just yeah, like you're coffee. not a you're not a Jake or Logan Paul. You can't drink this stuff. I'm not. a Yeah, I'm not a Paul. So anyway, yeah. Anyway. So this episode's about Halloween. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, there's uh, three main stories that we're going to we follow, or we can just walk through as we go, because they kind of overlap a little bit. Ooh, what do you want to do, Jeremy? I said, let's just go through it. I, just, I, th- I thought this one flowed really well. All right. So uh, so it starts in the, uh, the briefing room, because that's the best place to start, as everybody is... Uh, getting set up and Amy's complaining about how Halloween's terrible because everyone's drunk wearing a mask and uh, everyone thinks they have to dress sexy. And, uh, and at one point she says, I passed by a slutty tree. Uh, and uh, she says, who wants to have sex with a tree to which Scully and Jake both respond. Was it a maple? Was it a maple? Which I don't, I, there's just like in the right a little bit into that mm, question. Uh-huh. And yeah. it's like, what is going on there? I love that. But then I like go, go even further, like outside the character and in the writer's room, when they wrote that line, do you think somebody said, what do you think the sexiest tree is? And people just started throwing (laughs) And like everybody across the board, (laughs) maple, (laughs) maple. (laughs) What about dogwood? No maple. You're wrong. Yeah. I mean, some people are really into those birches. Wow. uh, Yeah. I got 99 problems, but a birch. Ain't, ain't one. one. I don't have any birches on my property, son. Not anymore. <laughs> They're all houses now. I used to have nine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I did. <laughs> You're so white. We're so white. I had nine birches, but they were they, they got <laughs> they got some kind of birch disease and uh, had oh, to yeah. come down. So yeah, I got nine birches. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, we're gonna do it. We're so gonna make it. We're gonna make Charles it. comes in dressed uh in a in a costume and <laughs> uh, which he calls Stoom, uh, and uh, he's speaking Italian and uh, they're trying. He's like, "Who are you?" <laughs> and uh, uh, Jake's like, "All right, uh, you're Ch- Dumpy Chuck Norris." Mm-hmm. And Rosa then guesses Dumpy Ron Weasley because it's a <laughs> red wig, and uh, he's like, "No, I'm Mario Batali." Um, 
and uh, you know the celebrity chef ginger prince of italy um and uh yeah so it doesn't look like it but a perp walks by and says hey sweet batali costume dude which is not who you really want to be no. calling you uh like you got to figure it out um and so because yeah. because yeah he's he's going to jail he goes and charles is like yeah thank you a man with impeccable taste and jake goes yeah is he he bit a guy's butt off at a wnba game <laughs> Eric Stoltz with a mask <laughs> from mask. From mask. You, from mask. Mask. It took me a while to figure out like, what is that? Cause I was thinking like mask the cartoon. And then I remember right. the M-A-S-K. movie right. with Cher and mm-hmm. a kid who had like a elephant man syndrome. Yeah. And so <laughs> wait, is that, <laughs> I think it's what it is. That's, I think it's what it's called. I don't know what the, like, I think that's the shorthand for it. It's an mm-hmm. actual disease with a name other than elephant man syndrome. Right. But, Cause um, girls can get it too person of elephant syndrome um but yeah that was a deep deep cut in in pop pop culture referencing and i i appreciated it so uh yeah so they uh they're doing the briefing and um uh so sergeant jefford says it's gonna be a really busy night and uh jake's like the holding cell is completely full i keep having to separate hillary clinton from kim jong-un Cut back to those two making out in the 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 holding cell, which is odd. Um, but then Holt gives a uh, wants to send some cops to go to the warehouse party, so he sends Boyle since he's already in costume and uh, as a Joy Behar <laughs> from The View. <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, and then also Santiago who hates Halloween. Um, and so Charles is going to be like, Hey, I'm going to make you have a super fun Halloween. You're going to love it. And, um, and Amy says, can you make everyone kind, sober and fully dressed? And Jake responds, kind, fu- kind, sober, and fully dressed. We found the name of Santiago sex tape. So, uh, so that gets that joke going throughout the episode, uh, here. So then credits da 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 da. in the series. That's the first time. Yeah. First time this joke happens. So. That's what she said. Hmm. Well, that, I'm that's saying a that's, different, the, that's no, a different show. Right. But that's this show's version of that, I feel. Yeah. That's all I'm trying to say. Yes, indeed. Indeed. So uh, Jake comes in uh, arresting a banana and uh, a guy dressed in a banana and cuts to him on, at the, the crime scene as he's robbing a bank and he's stuck in a revolving door. And so he starts using all kinds of banana puns. Um and, uh, and he's like, you're trying to split, huh? Don't worry. I'm sure you'll get a, out on appeal. And he's like dying. And he's trying to get all the cops to be on board with him. And um, yeah. So so then he tried, the guy like tries to take the money out and it blows up. He's an ink plot, blue ink all over him, himself. And so, um, so the uh, J- Charles, Jake though says, yeah, I think I would be a great criminal. I'm smarter than all of them. And uh, Charles like, they'll call you the handsome bandit, <laughs> which is so weird. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And so Holt is like, I'm fairly certain you would be caught. No scratch that. I'm 100% sure you would, certain you would be caught, which sets up a challenge that uh, Jake is like, all right, I'll steal something from your office. And by the end of the day, and you will have to do my paperwork for tonight. If I lose, uh, I will do uh, the next five weekends, no overtime. And uh I won't tell anybody about the time I saw you wearing short shorts outside of work. <laughs> so, uh, which is a great way of telling people about the time you saw people. <laughs> right. So, uh, yeah. So, um, Holt takes it. Um, and, uh, but Jake's like, if I win, uh, you have to do all my paperwork tonight and you have to publicly state that I'm an amazing detective slash genius. Um, and so they enter into this arrangement and uh, so now it sets up the heist. The yes, heist, the Halloween uh, heist. I love heist heist plots, movies, shows. Yeah, all of the heist heist. Pekitis was yeah, kind of a heist. You, I exactly. Mean, yeah, so, he went in to like mess up the office and leave yeah. a peach pit. So it's kind of a reverse heist in that he was leaving something behind. But, right. But it's still you know sneakery. Uh, the other day, my kids and I we went to Barnes and Noble. Um, and you we were left sitting at the, the books table. There? I left all the books there. 
uh, we're sitting, actually I bought two, but uh, we were sitting at the table and my first response uh, as they were sitting there eating their cookies, I said, all right, let's plan a heist. <laughs> so and they just I looked at me you, like, no, <laughs> I brought you to this public place to plan our, our genius heist. Yeah. But you know how many like movies, it seems like the heist planners are doing this at restaurants. Like, I feel like they like, yeah, have these or, conversations or like reservoir dogs. Like there's like the scene where they're like talking beforehand and they're in a restaurant and like, right. Yeah. Anyway. Or, 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 or somebody has a warehouse. Right. You, and I don't have you, a warehouse. You, right. Barnes Noble. That's the close. I mean, and now that the warehouse is gone, the CD place, you can't even do oh, it there. Man. Yeah. I was very confused when warehouse and Dave Matthews band's fan club warehouse were happening at the same time. And I was like, how did Dave Matthews band buy all of the warehouses? Like, that's amazing. These guys are like moguls in the music business. They were not, but that's Taylor Swift's job. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, I'm no, got, I'm not you, wrong. I mean, you, got Dave, you got some Dave Matthews on your brain. I'm getting a, a new oh, record. It's almost today. like you have an album that's coming. <laughs> which, which, which album are you getting? Some Devil, his solo album, which I love. Excellent. So good. He recorded it. He recorded some of the songs at Bastyr University, which is over there from where I'm sitting. Right through the wall that you're pointing to. Like uh, Probably a straight line. Mm -hmm. I always know where I am in relationship to Kirkland, my hometown. And it's just (laughs) right over there. (laughs) To to Kirkland, my hometown? Yeah. Last night I was in Kirkland and I was like, here. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So anyway, uh, you're just a compass that's spinning round and round because you're right where you're supposed to be. Anyway, yeah, it was gonna say? very confusing. Yeah, I, I well, I was pretty sure. Now I'm thinking about it. Like, it right. is like like straight that way. <laughs> so, uh, not important to anybody listening to this, but uh, for the 12 people who may watch this eventually on YouTube, hi. Um, so Rosa comes in uh, uh, with a nun in costume, and uh, his, the nun's name is Sister Steve. <laughs> So, uh, he got, uh, he got mugged and some guy dressed as a Royal baby punched him and took his wallet and she's laughing at him. (laughs) Royal baby. (laughs) Yeah. Remember when the Royal baby was born? No. Oh yes. The actual Royal baby. Yeah. It's, uh, William and Kate's baby. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, That was a big deal. People were like, look at this baby. Yes. I've seen babies before. He's so babyish. So small. And like he, now he's bigger. That's how they work. That's how humans happen. John uh, Ross Bowie is the actor. Yeah, that that is the the nun. He he was in a show. I don't know if you ever saw Speechless. I thought yeah. I thought it was a kind of a fun show. So anyway, I do like in, that actor. He's been in he's so been, many things. He's been in a bunch of stuff. So anyway, thank you for looking that up. You're welcome. Uh, yeah. So uh, yes, Sister Steve is kind of upset that Rosa keeps laughing and. Uh, and Rosa's like, I can't tell you how many nuns I wanted to beat up in school, in Catholic school. Ten. <laughs> like, I can't tell you. Ten. Uh, and uh, Terry's like, I didn't know you went there uh, to Catholic school. And Rosa's like, good. You shouldn't know it. Um, and uh, and so Terry's like, I'm going to figure it out. And because uh, um, I know you're really a big softy. And, uh, and Sister Steve, no, I think she's really mean. <laughs> uh and so, yeah, so Terry's mission is to figure out like why uh, Rosa got kicked out of Catholic school. But and... I, love, uh, I love Terry's trash talk is you probably read a Maya Angelou poem at graduation and cried. <laughs> like that's insulting to Rosa. Like, yeah, it's, gr- it's great. It's not that far off because <laughs> Rosa does have a soft side that we're going to learn about mm-hmm. in the series, um, you know, but it is one of those things that she tries to hide uh so uh like deep below her mean exterior um and so terry's like i'm gonna find out and rose like no you won't and he's like i'm a detective i will detect uh and so yeah so jake is trying to figure out how to get a lead on stealing holt's medal of valor and uh and so he goes to talk to to gina uh and uh and he's like, what's the schedule today? And she says, I'm not going to help you. I'm his assistant. I take that job incredibly seriously. Jake looks down. He's like, you're literally making paper airplanes out of police reports right now. <laughs> so, um, How else and- is she supposed to get him into that bin over there? <laughs> 
So, um, yeah. So she says, fine. Captain's in a meeting uh, in 10 minutes. And uh, and Jake's like, perfect. Kisses Gina's forehead. Um, and he's like, what does your, your skin taste like? And it's Dinah Lohan. I'm wearing her face lotion, which is, is Lindsay, Lindsay Lohan's, Lohan's mom. mom. Was she <laughs> so, a thing? Uh, I think the whole Lohan like environment was a thing. Like all mm-hmm. the, like her dad and mom were characters, pop culture characters at some point. So, okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So Charles and Amy are over at the, uh, the Kalb street warehouse, the one on the Kalb street mm-hmm. and, uh, or they're heading over to it, I should say. And, uh, Charles is pointing out all the fun stuff, really. Uh, you know, there's a huge amount of drug activity. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> all the fun stuff. Yeah, he's so excited about like as he's talking about like Halloween, but he's also like there's a huge amount of drug activity. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so Amy's in this skeleton costume. Is like, why is this so stiff? Bone uh, person. What's that smell? And uh, Charles points out that the department never washes them, so it's probably puke because it's you know apprehended from the evidence room essentially. Uh, and uh, and so that's gross. And uh, and then he was like, look, Raggedy Ann over there is drinking vodka right out of the bottle. And uh, and so she's like, people think just because they put a costume, they could do anything. Um, and <laughs> Halloween is Christmas for jerks. <laughs> uh, so um, so then Raggedy Ann is like, oh, she says, like, stop. You can't drink out of open containers. And Raggedy Ann says, oh, why should I listen to you, bone person? <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, Amy, it's called a skeleton. It's a very common word. <laughs> actually yeah and she holds up the cop uh her badge and like oh these guys are cops these are cops and everybody starts booing so cut back to the precinct and holt sees that jake is in his office is like what do you do or in the ceiling he hears him up there and uh he's like are you in my ceiling he's like no uh so what are you just waiting for me to leave and then you will blow yourself down and win it's like who are you talking to no one's up here uh so so Holt leaves, um, but he takes the metal off the wall and puts it into a safe that in a combination that is only known to him. And so making the the heist even more difficult. Um, and I love that. Uh, I love that Holt sandwich is in the safe as well. Yeah. Because who's going to want to steal his sandwich? Hitchcock and Scully. Exactly. But his sandwich is probably like just the bread and like. <laughs> That's it. Protein paste. Not even <laughs> peanut butter. Like this is chickpea paste. Just, oh, yeah. hummus, bread and hummus. So, uh, yeah. So Jake falls through the ceiling um, and uh, it's a whole thing. So a little bit later, Jake walks in with another perp and uh, he it's uh, he sees that Amy and Charles are coming in and he's like, what happened to you guys? I thought you were supposed to be at the warehouse party. And he was like, we got egged. Some of the shell got in my contacts, my hair, my mouth, and my bra. And Jake's like, I can't tell if that's hot or not. It's not. Uh, and uh, so um, then Charles uh, is like so excited about everything. And he's like, we're having a, such a great time. Right, Amy? And Amy's like, I just wish I was dead. Uh, how's the unwinnable back going? Uh, and he's like, well, I fell through the ceiling and onto a pencil. But other than that, also badly bruised my brain. <laughs> <laughs> so great. It's going great. Yeah, things are going perfectly. And so Rosa is like, I can't believe you. You should just should have made a bet you could win. Like who wears more denim jackets? Uh, <laughs> which is again, one of those is like, why don't we have more of that information? <laughs> like who wears more denim jackets? That was one time. Uh, and he's like, I can't believe you aren't supporting me in this. Uh, you're always telling me I'm the best. And then it's a series of flashbacks with Charles telling Jake he's the best. Uh, and, uh, no one else, just Charles. Um, and so, and, uh, Terry's like, look, Jake, I love you. Like one of my daughters, but mm-hmm. it's not about you or how smart you are. It's ha- Captain Holt. He's a genius. He's had your number at every turn. Uh, and so, uh, Jake's like, well, not this day turn time. I'm pretty sure I had a concussion. He falls back onto on falls forward onto Terry. Um, so cut to the l- what is that room called? The lineup, right? Yeah. Would that be just be called a lineup room? Would they have? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So That's they have all of these uh, suspected royal babies. <laughs> like they're being, they're suspected of being babies. Well, they're suspected of being muggers, but they're dressed as royal babies. Right. Right. And so uh, Sister Steve is trying to find the one that mugged him, uh, and uh, and says, 
You're like maybe the third guy, uh, the baby who mugged me was pretty short and Rosa laughs at that. <laughs> uh, he's like, you're not supposed to laugh at me. Um, and so uh, there was like, number three, can you step forward and say, give me your money, you stupid bag of crap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he comes out. He says, hey, poor, "Poor sister Steve." <laughs> no, wrong giant baby. <laughs> uh, Terry is there, and he's still trying to figure out like why she got kicked out of Catholic schools. Like, were you doing drugs? Mm-mm. Were you selling drugs? Mm-mm. How bad could it have been? Could it have been? Did you burn down a church? Um, and then he's like, "She says, uh, number three, step forward and say the word worse, worse." So it's like, "Ooh, what did what did she do?" It's worse than burning down a church. Uh, so then we cut back to the precinct and uh, Holt is like, uh, do you know, I can't find Peralta anywhere. Uh, you're the only one who can decipher his handwriting. And so he's holding a piece of doc, a document that says it, it says he arrested that bunny, but I don't know what for he he's either a crispy mother werewolf or cowboy mustard Oslo, Norway. Gina looks at it and says, Bunny groped multiple women on the subway, being able to read Jake. <laughs> like, that's the reason. It's like mm-hmm. being able to read Jake's handwriting is a gift, a useless, useless gift. Um, and while this is all happening, Holt realizes that there is a mysterious person in his office, a man dressed as a janitor. And he's like, Excuse me one second. Nice costume, Peralta. And Peralta's like, No, no, just a normal janitor pushing trash around. Uh, and so. Jake is caught and uh, he, and he's like, ah, are you really think this is going to work? He's like, no, this is a gambit was designed to fail. Just like in chess, sometimes in order to win, you have to sacrifice your king. Mm-hmm. It's like, that's exactly how you lose chess. Um, and he's like, no, I, I learned from my Uncle Bob. And it turns out Uncle Bob taught him to just shoot the chess pieces. Yeah. While uh, he's drinking now, Coors Light. Yeah. Now you're a chess master. Uh, and then he also taught me to shoot backgammon too. Do you know how to play backgammon? I used to. That's the one with the long triangles. Is that it? Mm-hmm. I've never yeah. learned. It's one of those boards. Yeah, it does have long triangles with like the little tiles or circles. Yeah. It looked hard. Yeah. My gra- my great grandma taught me backgammon because I think she invented it. Wow. But, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Because it's an old game. She was really old too. Yeah, it's fun. It's kind of like uh what's what's the what's what's the the one with the different trays and the pit Macala? M- Mancala? Mancala. It's a little bit like that. Okay. I don't but know. I think dice are involved somehow. Cool. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, okay. Jake doesn't know how to play either. Uh, and so Holt's like, I expected better of you. You could have at least created a diversion to distract me from your terrible costume. And he's like, well, I did have that, uh, but it's a little timing issue. And then the garbage can catches on fire. <laughs> it's like, ah, captain, you better head over there for like 15 minutes to see what you're going on with that. Beware of the backdraft. I'll be in your office. And Holt is not, he's not plussed through it all. And so, um, yeah, so that didn't work or did it? TBD. TBD. It's my favorite charity. Yeah. So back at the, uh, the Cobb Street warehouse, they've cleaned up a little bit. Uh, and Charles like, come on, AC, lo- uh, AC, Amy, loosen up. Uh, you look like such a cop and uh, like you got to blend in. Uh, and, Amy's like, I will never love Halloween. And uh, Charles starts backing up his dance onto her. And he's like, uh, and then like, oh, there's a guy stealing a thing and uh, or selling drugs. And so they go and they try to chase him and he drops the drugs. And Amy has to climb, crawl on the floor to get the bag of drugs. She gets it. And a mysterious substance is poured upon her. And she's like, what is that? How is it hot and cold? Which is gross. So gross. Uh, This is one of the reasons why I don't like Halloween. It's just, there's just a lot of grossness. There's a lot of well, people well, being drunk and don't crawl around on the floor. Step one. How else am I supposed to celebrate? Oh, find drugs. Okay. I'll do that. Uh, no, no I'm just saying how, well, no, how else are you supposed to find drugs? But other than crawling around on the floor, no, dude, it's not like if you go down to Edmonds or uh-huh. walk around like mm-hmm. with your kids, you get to see everyone in their costumes right. and everyone now yeah if you go to a warehouse party probably not the best environment for that yeah i'm just saying there's you make the halloween you want that's it's all i'm saying mm. Mm. manifest your best halloween I don't know. no uh did you celebrate halloween growing up yes we did not i think that's part of it like my household we were very much the non-halloween party people yeah but didn't so. you guys do like like harvest parties 
We went a couple times and it was yeah. lamer than doing nothing. So <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? Throwing the hook over the sheet and getting a piece of candy. A tootsie roll. A tootsie roll. Not even a good tootsie roll. Somehow, like, somehow a you vanilla hooked. tootsie roll. <laughs> and they're called, they're not called tootsie rolls either. They're called midges. They're the, <laughs> they're the little ones. They're called midges. Do they have like a kangaroo on them or something? No, they're from the tootsie people. They oh, the tootsie people. Big not tootsie. the people like the Big tribe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, I thought you meant like the movie with a uh... hotel Rwanda. <laughs> <laughs> no, Toots, Tootsie with, with Dustin Hoffman. With Dustin Hoffman. Yeah. Anyway, Dustin Hoffman was in Hotel was Rwanda. In, Didn't you know hotel that? Rwanda. Yeah, my bad. Don Cheadle and uh, Dustin Hoffman. And it was Dustin a, Hoffman. It not was as a, funny as I thought it was going to be. Hilarious, buddy comedy. Wow. So, uh, yeah. So. The yeah, the Tootsie walk, Roll people. Cake, cakewalk. What a dumb... Like, cakewalk is essentially church gambling. Yeah, and you get Aunt Midge's like, like soggy pineapple upside down cake Yeah, that she didn't just, wait to frost when it was still warm and it was just all... It was mm-hmm. bad. It was all bad. It was all bad. So, yeah, we stayed home with the lights off. <laughs> Turn all the lights off. Don't let anybody know we're here. They won't come. And then one year, somebody did come uh, to ring the doorbell and we didn't have any candy for them. My dad gave them cough drops. <laughs> so <laughs> this is Halloween in my house. So, wow. It was not good. That's okay. Anyway. Uh, so back at the at the precinct or as the document I found on the internet says, present, uh, the, um, there are many spelling errors in this thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, Holt is on the phone trying to talk to somebody about fixing the ceiling and he notices feathers flying in through the vent <laughs> and uh, he is like hold on just a minute he goes into the room next door which is, I think is the break room and uh, and he's like Jake what are you doing he's like hi I'm just photocopying some stuff as he's up on a shelf holding some pigeons and he's like you're trying to jam pigeons into my air conditioning to flush me out of my office uh, <laughs> and Jake's like way to ruin the surprise <laughs> Uh, so it's like, how did you get those birds? They're like, by be using my big brain, and he's outside with a loaf of bread, like a baguette, <laughs> and a bag. Like, get in the bag, eat the bread, uh, <laughs> eat the bread. And uh, and so that is how he got him. And uh, and so uh, Jake's like, it's all part of an elaborate plan to defeat you. And so he's like, well, you're you and your big fat brain are losing badly. So well, maybe if you look at our bet, but how many people are holding birds? I'm winning four to nothing. And cut back to hold. He's like, you're only holding two. And cut back to Jake, and he just has a handful of feathers and two birds. So he lost two somehow. Uh, and then Charles and Amy are coming back to the priest precent and uh, depression. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and so Charles like, hey, when we're logging in the drugs, you missed some awesome stuff. A guy walked in in full astronaut costume, gave me a high five. And Amy in the in the bone person suit. Uh, a deep voice says he high fived me too, <laughs> and it's like wait Hitchcock is like oh darn I wasn't supposed to talk about it, um, but I got so excited about that astronaut <laughs> as you do yeah uh, and so he says Amy paid me fifty bucks to trade places with her for the rest of the night, and so Charles is a little upset and uh, Hitchcock's like yeah I'm going to use that money to buy two suits <laughs> twenty five dollar suits that's a good deal even at the uh, men's warehouse it's not that good of a deal. Yeah, if you didn't buy your suits at the street corner, you pay too much. Do you remember those, like the shoe pavilion commercials? Oh, oh yeah, man, I think about that probably three <laughs> times a week. <laughs> that is that is three times too many. Whenever I put on my shoes, uh... <laughs> <laughs> they got you. They got you. It's like if you didn't buy your They're... shoes at the shoe pavilion, you pay too much. And it's his accent, like it's so like nothing and then it's just too much is the where the accent shows up it's like what's happening here who are you he was dracula all along and then also pro golf discount that guy <laughs> do you remember he would just like it's a lot of daytime tv my my third parent uh that like he would be on during a team and hawaii 50 reruns this yeah. is when i saw all these commercials men's warehouse Magnum, Magnum PI, yeah. uh, shoe pavilion uh and pro golf discount and it was a guy like dressed yes. in golf clothes at the golf store mm-hmm. talking about how all the golf stuff is on sale. And I was like, I didn't play golf or anything. And like, I just, he looked like a, like a photocopy of a photocopy of Steve Gutenberg. <laughs> <laughs> so 
right? I was more of a, uh, yeah, no, no, a hundred percent. I was more of a radio guy. So I was inundated with the, uh, um, now you have a friend in the diving business, the Shane. Oh company. yeah. Tom, Sh- Tom, Tom, uh, Tom, Tom Shane. Shane. Yeah. 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 I was going to say Tom Zales. Like that's a different thing altogether. <laughs> yeah. Tom Shane no. of the Shane company. The Shane, Shane and the Zales, they were, they had, there was, there was some yeah. bad blood there. You're going to love your diamond ring. I guarantee it. Yeah, man. The Shane company. So, uh, Jake is, uh, um, yeah, he's doing things again. Uh, I'm just, where am I? Uh, he, he comes up to Gina and he's like, I'm so tired of losing to Holt. I want that medal. And, uh, Gina's like, it's, just, it's not real gold. I tried selling it zero bids. Mm. <laughs> um, but then she's like, you know, I'm going to give you some advice that I gave the girls in my dance troupe dance till you drop. Uh, and then the, the advice was dance, dance, dance. <laughs> it's pretty good. Uh, which was very weird. Uh, Jake's like, I'm not sure how that applies, but thank you. Uh, and, uh, oh, it does not apply. It means don't give up. Uh, and if you would have won, we would have won if Natasha's water hadn't broken. <laughs> Natasha, every time. And then I was like, oh, Natasha had her baby. Oh, you know Natasha? Yeah. And they both say at the same time, her dog has her lupus. Dog had lupus. So small world. Uh, and, uh, and so Jake's like, all right, well, I'm going to go cry. And, uh, and Gina's like, I feel bad for him. And then Holt is like, don't, he brought this on himself. You can hang up now. Been on the phone the whole time, listening to Gina and Jake's conversation. He's brilliant. So, so Charles confronts Amy. It's like, you paid money to get out of working with me. And, and she's like, I had to tonight's been awful. Halloween's the worst. I don't understand why you like it. Uh, and, uh, he's like, no, all the things that are bad about Halloween are what make it great. The big kids egg you, <laughs> that you and your friends run away together. Friendships are forged in the crucible of Halloween adversity. That's all I wanted for us. <laughs> <laughs> Bond. He takes off his Batali wigs. Like take, keep the wig. I don't need it anymore. Uh, like in a real like cop trope of like, take my badge and gun. I don't need this anymore. I'm out of here. I'm going to be a vigilante lone, lone wolf. Yeah, whatever. Loose cannon. Loose cannon. And Nick uh, cannon. instead of a gun and badge, it's a nasty old wig. And so, uh, so Jake, uh, is like calls out to Captain Holt. Can you come in here for a second? And, uh, and Holt comes out, you need something. It's like, yeah, I do hit it. And all the Royal babies do this flash mob thing where they're like taking keys and throwing keys and, and he's creating this big diversion for uh, to confuse Holt and Holt sees right through it. And he goes to the break room where Jake is pressing his Holt's keys into a, uh, uh, a wax thing so that he can make a copy. And uh, Holt's like, just give me my keys. And he's like, do you have stop catching me? Do you have any idea how much money I spent on key rings? And Holt's like $23. <laughs> Like, that's so close. It was 22, 76. Um, so, uh, so Jake's frustrated and uh, holds like, look, ten-. Jake says, it's been a little humiliating. Things are not going well. So I'm just going to throw it out here. What do you say? We call off the bet and pretend this whole thing never happened. Uh, and, uh, and it's like, no, I'm not letting you off the hook. And Jake is like, come on, you could save face. <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, anyway, it's not happening. So then Terry is, uh, comes up to Rose's desk. He's like, so I called your school. And uh, got a hold of Sister Bernadette, and she, and you're like, oh yeah, she was my favorite. Well, she said you were a model student and transferred of your own volition. Uh, and it's like, fine, I left because I got into the American Ballet Academy. I was a classical dancer, and I was good. And so Terry's like, I knew you were a big softy. Like, if you tell anyone, I will break your face. And uh, and she uh, closed the door with a foot, and uh, and Terry's like, no, you won't. You're too sensitive. <laughs> so I love Terry. He's so great. Uh, so then Amy is talking to Holt and, uh, and she's like, some, our officer just arrested Peralta. He's like, what? He's like, they caught him scaling the building with a blowtorch. So <laughs> why, <laughs> why? Uh, so Holt, uh, goes into the interrogation room where Jake is, uh, handcuffed and, uh, and, and he's like, captain, welcome. Would you like to shake the hand of the man who defeated you? And he like lifts up his hands, but they're in that bar thing. So like, pulls it back down like i forgot i was wearing handcuffs and uh and holds like climbing the si- side of the building uh what were you thinking it's like i was thinking i had a better core strength <laughs> i got winded about 10 feet up uh 
And he's like, I knew you wouldn't win. Your performance tonight uh, not, made me question not only how good a detective you are, but quite frankly, how smart you are. <laughs> oh. It's like, you, that's not, well, that's not surprising. You constantly underestimate me. He's like, no, I correctly estimated you. Uh, and so he's like, you got a deadline here. And here you are handcuffed in a locked room. And, and Jake's like, which is precisely where I planned on being. Let me tell you a little story. Remember when I fell through your ceiling? <laughs> Yeah, that was six hours ago. Uh, it was like, that was a disastrous failure, but it gave me an idea for Herman, the friendly janitor you met. Uh, and he's like, I caught you as Herman, but you didn't catch Rosa. And this is the best part of the the, uh, the heist episodes, I think, yeah. is when the plan is revealed. Right. I love it so much. Because right. it's all these flashbacks. And uh, and so you didn't catch Rosa. It cuts flashback to, to Rosa while Jake is getting called out for being Herman. Uh, Rosa is picking locks uh, in Holt's office and she's really good at it. And uh, Holt's like, all right, okay. And it's like, no, me neither. Of course, I had to find a way to get her out of your office without you seeing her, which is why the trash can was set on fire. Uh, And so, and then Holt's like, what about the pigeons? Oh, the gray pigeons? Uh, And he's like, those were a red herring. I love that. I love that line. The gray pigeons, they were a red herring. (laughs) Yeah. Their only purpose was to draw you out into the copy room while two of my team members broke into your locked office. Uh, so now I had a way to into your office and an open cabinet. All that was left was the royal babies to steal your keys. Um, and uh, Amy and, and Terry, while he's telling that, they they, they broke into Holt's office uh, and it's like, but you didn't need my keys. The cabinet was already unlocked. You needed a way into the safe. And Jake's like, I got it. Flashback again. He's like, you were so concerned with getting your keys back. You didn't even notice that Sergeant stole your phone. That's right. Even the Sergeant is on my side. And then had what? Charles dust your screen for prints. The greasiest smudges revealed the four numbers you used the most. Um, and, uh, and the four numbers in your passcode based on your advanced age, I assume are the same <laughs> passcode for everything, your phone, your email, and of course you're safe and hold as he's saying all that is like, Ooh, <laughs> he's got that. Um, and uh, so because at that point, I bumped into a girl dressed as a sexy robot and we got her flirt on hard. <laughs> and it cuts to the scene as they're going up the stairs. And uh, I was like, what is that? How's that a part of plan? Oh, it wasn't. It's just ruled. <laughs> uh, and he's like, so that brings me to five minutes ago when Amy came into your office and told you that I had been arrested. Uh, and I knew that uh, only one you would believe. Uh, she's the only one you believe. Frankly, she's usually too lame to take part in these kinds of things. Um, and so as you walked over here, Charles awkwardly stuffed himself through your window mm-hmm. and opened the safe. We, we had the four numbers of your code, which meant there were only 24 possible combinations for Charles to try to take the things, uh, take up to four minutes, which is why I really dragged you dragged out this explanation. Uh, and, uh, and I, I mean, I really stretched it out. I don't know if you noticed, but there were times where I was like, what am I even talking about? <laughs> and then the timer goes off. It's like, all right, four minutes is up, which means Boyle is either on the other side of that door or I've lost. Cold opens the door and there's Charles with the, the Medal of Valor. It's so great. All came together with 20 seconds to spare. Um, and then he's like, game over, Captain. Check me. <laughs> and I think you mean checkmate. You really need to learn how to play chess. <laughs> so uh, and it's like, how did you get everybody to work on, on this? And he's like, well, I appealed to their sense of teamwork and camaraderie. And he gets up giving a speech in a terrible Scottish accent. Uh, and, uh, and I was like, and that works? He's like, no, not at all. Instead, I bribed them. I told them that if we pulled this off, I would do their paperwork. And since you're doing all my paperwork, <laughs> dun, dun, dun. so uh, yeah, so Holt did it with the power of teamwork, which is a lesson he learned last week. And he's applying it into his life. Holt, so quickly. Created, Holt created his own monster. Exactly. So this is all Holt's fault. The monkey paw curled. Yes. And so, um, so then we... Uh, uh, cut to Terry calling Boyle into the the briefing room, and uh, Charles walks in, and everybody's all dressed up. And he's like, "What is all this?" And Amy's like, "You know, I think Halloween is for jerks, but I was the jerk this time. I'm sorry about tonight." <laughs> and Jake says, "I'm sorry about tonight. We found the title for Santiago's follow up sex tape, <laughs> and uh, and so uh, <laughs> Charles is like, I'm I'm sorry. I couldn't convince you to love Halloween. And again, Amy says, "It's not your fault. I was terrible." <laughs> It's not your fault. I was terrible. Is another one of <laughs> J- Santiago's and Amy smacks him. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, so then they're friends again. And, and uh, Amy's like, anyway, we're all going to the bar. So get changed. Cause you can't be the only one there not wearing a stoom. And Charles is so stoked because stoom caught on, which it did not. 
Stop um, trying to make fetch happen. Yeah. Yeah. That's mean girls, right? Mm-hmm. I've never seen that. I, uh, you just follow all the pop culture references. Yeah. I just hear people say, I looked it up. Like, what is that from? Like on Wednesdays, we wear pink. Like why? I look, I Googled, why do people wear pink on Wednesdays? <laughs> because of mean girls. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. I guess I know the point of this movie now. So I'm sure I don't. Uh, so then uh, later at the bar, uh, Jake's like, Captain Holt, it's nice to see you. Never thought I'd say that. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, and so Jake's like, uh, what you go, would you go all the way to all the, uh, words are hard. (laughs) So close. You're getting two paragraphs. Uh, but he's basically saying like, you have to make an announcement here, Mm -hmm. uh, and the floor is yours. And so he says, all right, everyone, uh, Peralta is an amazing detective slash genius. Uh, now if you'll excuse me, I have some paperwork to do and everybody claps and, uh, it's a party. So. Then uh, Rosa uh, uh, said that an officer in the 92nd got caught the royal baby mugger. He had 19 wallets in his diaper. Uh, and then a caveman starts running through the precinct and Rosa drops him hard. And, uh, and uh, Terry is impressed. And then Rosa's like, I didn't tell you, I got kicked out of ballet school for beating the crap out of ballerinas. Um, and, uh, and then <laughs> Hitchcock and Scully are over in the corner. It's a good thing we gave him a heads up team effort go nine nine and uh scully is dressed as rambo yeah that's his costume which i appreciated because uh he does not look like rambo and rosa is bride of frankenstein but doesn't have bolts she has shotgun shells on her neck which i thought was pretty great (laughs) yeah (laughs) and then captain holt with his eye patch yeah he really went for it so he's evil holt mirror universe holt yeah. Yep. So that's that episode. Halloween Heist, the first of several. And in the last season, uh, it won't be on Halloween, but it will still be a heist. I'm pretty sure it's the last season. Anyway, we'll there, there will be a heist. We'll get there when we get there. So there, yeah. There will there will be heist. Any uh, anything else that uh stands out from this episode, Schmidt? Oh my goodness. Um I was just going to look up some of the the trivia, but I keep uh, fun fact. I keep clicking the wrong thing. No, 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 the safe the safe number was thirty one oh nine. Perfect. Um, and the thing about lupus, the dog has lupus. Um, canis uh, canis lupus is the scientific term for wolves, mm-hmm. which are the same genus canis as dogs. So maybe that was a thing. It's like a dog with lupus is a lupus lupus. Maybe that's the joke. Maybe. Subtle lupus lupus. Anyway, uh, yeah, no, no, that's it. I just again love a good heist. I like the uh, when the royal babies were doing taking the keys and doing that whole like thing. It was like very Thomas Crown Affair esque, mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. and uh, so just a little homage there to other heist movies and things like that. So yeah, I'm yeah, and then it's it's impressive how detailed the heist is, and they have like 22 minutes to pull the whole thing together and and yeah that's great i love these just to see how they do it so yeah it's a good episode it's super fun i love it off the top of your head i'm not prepared other heist movies real quick that you like heist heist i love heist the movie heist it's called heist Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's uh uh stole your heart um edward norton marlon brando um delroy lindo it was not a big successful movie, but I really enjoyed it. Um, okay. I also, I love uh, Ocean's Eleven. Yeah, probably one of the best. the 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 pacing and the music, every, like that movie, is never boring. Right, like everything about it, like it's just there's something, and I love like little little consistencies, like uh, what, pretty much every time it cuts to Brad Pitt's character, he's eating something. Mm-hmm. Which yeah. I, is just like a dumb little detail, but I just love it. So, rusty. yeah, rusty and uh, yeah, I love uh, the the that one is great. I'm not crazy about the other two, but that one is great. Um, what other heist movies are good? Did you ever see now? Now you see me. I have not seen it with Jesse Eisenberg yeah. and uh, yeah, that one's Spacey. Is yeah, it in that one pre yeah pre all the stuff. Yeah, that one's pretty good. Yeah, uh, I, I I would like to see it. Uh, 
Powder is a good heist movie. <laughs> what? <laughs> Where did it even come from? <laughs> what are you talking about? That was, yeah, it's speaking of Kevin Spacey, <laughs> K-Pax was excellent. K-Pax was actually a pretty good movie. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he, he eats a banana because he's an alien. Or was he? Or yeah, is he? No, he was. I don't know. A, that's a fun movie. Um, what other heist movies? What do you think? What do you, what do you, what are your, yeah. what are your go-tos? No, you kind of, you kind of stole the Ocean's Eleven, but that's the, that's kind of the classic one. You mentioned Thomas Crown Affair. Um, yeah, I don't know. The Italian Job. Yeah, that's a good one too. Both it's really good. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I haven't thought about it in a while, but I just love that genre. Heists and uh, murder mysteries. A good, yeah. a good murder mystery. But w- when you can't kill someone, a heist will do. Mm-hmm. Is my motto. So it's a good motto. Yeah, words to live by. <laughs> so when you yeah, can't let kill it, somebody, a heist will do. Yeah, let dun, it. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let us know. Let us know if what your favorite heist movies are. Yeah. Even if it's something like an episode of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. I'm sure there's one of those heists in in those episodes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, My Little Pony heist. I mean, Phineas and Ferb, like almost every episode of Phineas and Ferb is some kind of heist. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah. And that's just one of the best shows. Best best shows. Man. There's 104 days of summer vacation. Mm -hmm. And school comes around just to end it. Yeah. So the annual problem of our generation is figuring out how best to spend it. Like maybe. Anyway, I'll stop. I love that show. Um, yeah, that's it, I guess. Tell let, listener, email us podcasts. Uh, email us uh, parksandconversation at gmail.com and, uh, or leave comments on uh, the Speedy Signs review page. And uh, we will find those eventually. <laughs> so. I just really want to get, I want to get sponsored by Speedy Signs so bad now. Yeah, well, uh, you know what? Go for it. Make some okay. calls. Uh, 48 Hours is next. The, the TV show? You, no, the episode. Oh, okay. Yeah, not the movie. Jake stupidly arrests a male suspect despite having no evidence and only has 48 hours to prove he did it or release him without charge. Yes. Classic Jake blunder. Yeah, Peter Lauer directed this one or that one. Oh, I love Peter Lauer. Yeah. Yeah, he does, he does news so well. Dean Holland directed the heist. I don't know who that is. The Dean director Holland? of the heist of this well, movie. What else has he done? Of the move of the Halloween. Yeah, I understand. Dean Holland. He did a whole bunch of like Office and okay. Parks, and he was a producer on Parks and Rec. Great. And the Good Place. He's in the universe. I think mm-hmm. he's a like a second or third in command. We got to figure out the the rankings of everybody involved, but we'll get there. That's what I do with my friends too. Yeah. You don't want to know. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Cool. Sounds well, about, Jeremy, right. we should probably let these people go. Okay. Like they, can Moses, any, they can leave any time. Don't tell them that. Oh, it's not rude. <laughs> yeah. Just I like mean, your kids. Like, oh, I'm done with this. <laughs> I'm yeah, done. exactly. Like my kids. And that's our really whole relationship. I'm done with this dad. Bye. Run off with pizza. <laughs> so many times anyway yeah. so uh oh, listener course. thank you viewer yeah. you're welcome uh we'll see you later